I did not understand this as a new trainer. I, as a new trainer, I'll never forget, my one of my first athlete clients came in in season, and I thought, oh, my job is to get them to improve while in season, and so I beat them yeah. up. Yeah, and they were the performance the, dropped. The irony of this is, it's not just you being a new trainer. I, you see this even in sports; it still it's, blows my mind. It's, it's, what's up? Welcome back! It's mind pump time. Here's the giveaway for today: Maps oh. Split. This is our bodybuilder program, and we're going to give it away for free. But you got to do this: leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Okay, full disclosure: it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. We're trying to rank higher so people can get. Good fitness information, not crappy fitness information like everyone else on YouTube. So leave a comment in the first 24 hours, subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications. You do all those things, and if we like your comment, if we pick your comment, we'll notify you to get free access to Map Split. Also, big sale going on for the month of March. Check this out. We have something called the Maps Power Bundle. It's Maps Power Lift. This is a power lifter program. And we've combined it with Maps Strong in this bundle. Maps Strong is a strongman inspired workout program. So Maps Strong, great for strength and strength endurance, a little bit of agility, unconventional workouts. Maps Powerlift, all about maximal strength in the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat. Normally, if you get both, it's 300 bucks, but right now you can get them both in the Maps Power Bundle for one payment of $79.99. You heard me right. That's like a ridiculous percent off. I'm not good at math, but I know it's pretty damn good. So again, $79.99, Maps Power Bundle, Maps Strong, Maps Power Lift. Go sign up. Go to mapsmarch.com to do that. Okay, one more time, mapsmarch.com. All right, here comes the show. The best time of the day for consistency and long-term results. Midnight. First thing in the morning. Oh. <laughs> first thing in the morning. Dude, the so time. close. Have so you so guys close. actually, have you ever done like a, like a midnight? Have or, I? Yeah, like, come on, dude. Of course I have. Yeah. Absolutely. Have, have you worked out at most times of the day? I have. I've done it all. And um, What about you, Justin? I don't, I don't know if I've done a midnight workout. Yeah, yeah. I have. So, yeah. I'll, so I'll I'll tell a story. And I've I'll tried back coming back it. from the club and working out before. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> did you now, I didn't go to a club, but I was drinking. Tipsy. Yes. Yeah. And then I did go work out and I uh, ended up pulling a lat. I don't even know you could do that. Oh. But apparently you can if you've had a little bit too much to drink and you go. Oh, you think because like maybe the dehydration, huh? I think it was just no like lack of control. So uh. you just oh, you know, and I <laughs> pull the lap muscle. Don't do it's that. It's pretty smart. Yeah. No, here's why I think because this is a common question, right? Um, what's the best time of the day to work out? Now, uh, of course, the best time of the day to work out is the one that's going to work best it for you depends. and your schedule. However, through the decades that I've worked in gyms, there's some some things that I noticed quite consistently. Uh, with the morning crowd that you see in the gym. So when you work in these big box gyms and you work in them, you know, day in and day out, you start to notice trends. And there's definitely a morning crowd that comes in. And they typically come in between 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. They're by far the most consistent workout block of people. Well, it's, it's just because nothing interrupts that. It's the very first thing. They get up, they go do it, they get it done. And it's just like, you know, throughout the rest of the day, you're going to get inundated with all kinds of things coming your way that you have to deal with. And it might actually like ruin your chance for th that window. That's I, true. I feel like there's a bit of a bias here, though. I think that, that I think that says more about those type of people than it does the time of the day so much. Like, I think if you're the type of person that, that gets up and, and, and starts their routine like that and gets like, I think it has more to do with them than it does like, oh, it's because they're doing it in the morning. It's like, you're the type of person that will get up an extra hour early to go get your extra. Yeah. Well, chicken or the egg. That's the same. High, high that's, the same that's the same person who spends the extra day of studying for the tests when they were kids. That's it's true. The, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I think that says more, but they're the, the person who shows up to work always 15 to 30 that's, minutes it, early. That's like, somebody has more responsibilities on their plate. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's. That's By the way, I'm not this guy. So, yeah, yeah. well, and, and, and I will I say, love this. midday workouts, but I just can't do that. Yeah, and I, and I will say this: that's why we should learn from these people, right? They have figured out how to keep it consistent, and one of the strategies is to start your day that way. Things don't get in the way, and it also sets the tone for the day. Because this year's the other thing I noticed about the morning crowd versus the rest of the, the crowd: they were more serious, they had better moods. Um, of course, the consistency and the results, the morning crowd was typically more fit than any other time of the day crowd. Yeah. And it, it has to do with all of those things. I mean, but. I've always wanted to be that guy. I've always, I've, and I've tried multiple times in my yeah. lifting career to become that guy, but I just, and I think that my challenges, and this is just an excuse, right? Like, uh, like I, 
I love my nights, like especially even more so now that I have a kid than before, because that's kind of my time with Katrina. Yeah. I get home from work. I get to play with Max for a few hours before it's time for us to get ready to put him down. He goes down somewhere between 730 and eight and basically eight to midnight is my alone time with my wife where I get mm -hmm. to watch movies or have oh, playtime. Oh, so it's hard for or, you to wake up early. Yeah, because oh, I stay yeah. up late with yeah. her, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, And I mean, I totally could discipline myself to say like, hey, by 9.30, we're in bed and then that's mm -hmm. it. You know, fl fun time has to happen before that. And if it doesn't, then, but does it rarely happen? And a lot of times she's wrapping up either work stuff still or maybe laundry stuff or I'm cleaning house. And then really it's like 9, 9.30 when we finally get to like, hey, let's yeah. watch a Netflix yeah, well, show. I, or I, also, you should add though that compared to the average person, you're extremely consistent. I mean, you don't work out every day, but you work out every week yeah. and you work out at least multiple times a week very consistently. So it's it's working for you. But you know, for the average person, because I've, I've had lots of clients where we've had this conversation where consistency was a challenge. And we said, I said, you know, let's try morning workouts. And of course it's like, oh, I got to wake up early. I said, well, let's plan it and see what happens. And it's a very effective strategy. Once they did it, it was like they became very consistent. And the other thing for me, at least, you know, I, I definitely perform better later in the day. So I don't have my best workouts in the morning. I'm stronger in the afternoon. I'm going to hit more yeah. PRs. I'm going to get better pumps and all that stuff. That, that was a point I was going to bring up mainly because you also have to enjoy it. Right. So uh, I, I want to be that guy as well. And I struggle with being the morning person or whatever. And so, um, you know, I think you have to go through a few barriers, uh, of discipline to be able to get to that point. So there's a few things for me that were hurdles, uh, with trying to do in the morning <laughs> is that I just don't feel like I'm even, I have my wits about me yet. Yeah. And it takes like some, uh, you know, bit of momentum to, to get that to, Towards the end of your workout, you're finally like, oh, now I'm starting to yeah. feel it and I'm starting to get in the groove, well, but you don't get there until like consistently you do this week after week and it becomes a pattern. Now your body starts to recognize yeah, And it. I'm going to be honest with you, that's partially true and partially not true in the sense that, yeah, you do get better at morning workouts as you do them consistently. And I've been doing this now for years. But still struggle. I still will perform better in the afternoon. Yeah. But at this point, what I value more than like the superior, crazy, yeah, awesome the consistency. workouts. The consistency and- it I'm, trumps it. I'm sure. better at I'm better at work because I work out first. Come in here, a podcast, great. I'm better during the day. I'm yeah. better with my kids. It sets the stage because you know if you start your day with something hard. I mean, this is the truth. Now, you start the day with a struggle that you kind of overcome, which is what workouts kind of are a little bit. Mm -hmm. The rest of the day tends to move. That, a that's a hundred percent true. Yeah. Even when I hate doing it, and I like it, always sets the tone for the uh, yeah. for the day, and it's always positive. So my question to you is then: Are you very consistent and disciplined with your night routine totally. because of that yes so are, do you have like a hard stop like we do not go to bed later than this or like you all like will you even like leave jessica downstairs watching tv and you'll go up to bed at a certain time like what what is your nights look yeah like? so and that's the other thing that i like about it is it also contributes to consistency with sleep because it, it, you can't make it work if you go to bed late right you can't, you can't. No. now the cool thing is my wife also values sleep as well so by 9 30 10 o'clock we're typically in bed and asleep. And usually by 7.30 or so, the baby is down. We might spend an hour with the older kids. So by 8, 8.30, her and I have like an hour or two together. And then we go to sleep and, and wait. So it, it sets everything up and it puts everything in kind of this consistent schedule. If I didn't work out first thing in the morning, it would be, I, I, there's no way I'd be consistent. As I so am. I've sort of thrown a, a, a wrench in this whole thing because I've been trying really hard to do like a morning thing and then, you know, be consistent. But I'm in that same predicament where I only have, you know, a certain amount of time to hang out with my wife. And it's like, you know, the kids go down like at nine at, at this point just to get them. We try at eight, yeah. you know, it just starts to kind of move its way more towards nine. Then we only have that much time where we end up staying up to like 11 12 o'clock. I'm not really motivated. I'll get up. So my whole thing is to split it up throughout the day. So I'll do like 15 minutes, you know, first oh, thing like I'll go, you know, midday, I'll try and hit it. And then the end of the day, I'll, I'll try and hit it as well. So it's like, it's not as big of a commitment yeah. uh, per se, but like, again, it helps to keep me consistently stimulating my muscles at least because I'm in a different <laughs> goal these days than I, it was before. I, I like that a lot. I've done that and I really enjoy the way that makes me feel. You know, the, the other thing I'd like to see, and I don't know any studies on this, but I did notice this with clients, was that their diets tended to be better on the days that they worked out uh, mm -hmm. in the morning. And I think it's because totally. you, you work on the morning and then the rest of the day. Now I can see how this might backfire. Somebody may say, oh, I worked out so I can eat more. 
But usually what would happen is someone would have their workout and then the rest of the day they were like, oh, I'm already working out. Let me eat a little healthier. Let me make better choices. Yeah. So I would like to see some data on that. This is just my own anecdote, but I think it would also contribute to, because you're more consistent with your workouts, maybe more consistency, consistency with you know, nutrition as well. Yeah, Doug, you're a night owl too, right? You, uh, I mean, I know you have to struggle to do the mornings, I would think, too. I do. So what happens oftentimes is uh, I, you know, I get working on things and then I see the uh, the time getting later and later and I have to finish what I'm doing. So I want to be a person that goes to bed earlier, but uh, I, I don't oftentimes, but I'm still coming in in the mornings and I do prefer a morning workout. Yeah, yeah usually you're in here with me doing a little bit of- stuff. Yeah, I mean, because by the afternoon I'm, I'm tired, right? And yeah. I don't really feel like working out. Well, if I had a perfect like schedule, my schedule would literally be workout first thing in the morning, <clears throat> work, whatever, 2, 3 p.m., take a nap. <laughs> and then stay up a little later and then go to I've bed. I've got a buddy who gets naps like day awesome. naps, dude. I love naps. Yeah, dude. he gets day naps. I, I know you love I can, naps. And I can, I can 30 minutes and I can go, boom, 30 minutes and wake up and yeah. I feel I, I feel wish great. I wish yeah, we could you get a that. superpower. I know, that. it's great. So, yeah. Adam, I, I earlier you brought something up off air and you said you want to talk about this show. I want to hear more about this. Is it Logan Paul or which brother's putting oh, together this oh, league? He, uh, and who, he did it with, um, who was it with? It was Arnold, the right. Yeah, it was no. Was it Arnold? It was at the Arnold where they did. You talking about slap box? Yes. Yeah. yeah. They they partnered up and did you guys watch the highlights from it, dude? Hold on yeah. a second. So we've talked. This okay. is a thing now. Well, I mean, you've seen. You were the one that first showed me. The, oh yeah, I know that. that they do it, but, but it's, it's mainstream. It made it to the uh, Arnold. Cause Arnold Classics going on right now. Yeah. yeah. So it made it there, and Logan Paul and I. It must. Is it Arnold? Could you look it up for me, Doug? Who he partnered with? I, it was either him or the Rock. He one of the one of those guys he partnered with, and they put on like <laughs> this the, is the funniest thing. I've yeah, the seen. slap, the slap. I don't. Would you call it slap boxing? Is that what it's called? Well, or it's slap, not. Because it's like the slap. You, you get just one slap. Take it. Yeah. You just, you just sit there and you're just like they have to take it. Like this guy winding up all the way and just wham. Yeah, it's right not in the face. boxing. Like you can cover up and block. It's literally I'll hit you. Yeah. You hit me. It's like how much you can take. How much force you can Dude, take to your face. And people think just because your hand is open, you can't. Well, like, a few mess years up someone's brain. A few years ago, you introduced. It. I had never even seen it before, and we, we were on one of those kicks where we were like weird sports all over the country. Yeah. And you, could, you, I remember you shared it with us. Have you guys ever seen this? Yeah. And yeah, it's it's getting Ooh. big now. Who did he do? Oh, it was Arnold. Uh huh. So he did co-host it with Arnold. I wasn't wow. sure if it was Arnold. Or not. Wow. Yeah. And there's that one Russian dude with yeah the, this this one right here. There was that one Russian dude sleep, with the beard. Dude. You see that they chalk up their hand and everything. No. <laughs> Why would you chalk your hand? Oh, <laughs> better grip yeah. on the face. Yeah, so it's a slide. So it's a slip. It's a slip over. Yeah, so what I'm interested in the technique with it because you'd think if you caught somebody's ear, it would like uh, hit the, some part of their equ equilibrium and blow you know, out their eardrum. Well, I even yeah. think too, like how you like if you lead with your palm versus cupped, right? If you yeah. cup, you're gonna you're gonna it absorb a little bit of it. Well, or if you lead with your palm, from what I seen because I watched a few of these videos, the most effective guys they hit with the heel of the palm yeah, and yeah. they hit in the chin. Yeah, yeah so put they're trying to go for that knockout spot. And they right? knock yeah. them out, dude. Yeah. Oh, It's kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. Dude, dude, it's fun you know, to watch. There's I, just, a lot I of can't silly... believe you'd signed up for that. Can I say something crazy. right now? If I, was, if I was 15, I 100% would have <laughs> saw a video of this and then done this with my friends. 100%. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's a given. I'm a Part of the news that why I put on there, too, is I'm I'm just I'm fascinated in the the Paul brothers and just what, they, what they're doing, you know? Like, yeah. you talk about... I mean, I know if you're like our generation or older, you you kind of like you know scoff at them, or you just think that they're you know a bunch of stupid, silly it's kids. Bunch of trolls. But you got to give them some credit for like the, how savvy they are business wise. I mean, they literally are building an empire. You saw they released that drink too that they're doing now too. Dude, like, I swear to God, we are. If you you ever seen the parallels between the fall of the Roman Empire and uh, yeah, like where yeah. our society is going? We're, we're there. We're literally we're, our empire is crumbling. Literally, like they speak. had the Colosseum, they would have like yeah. you know pregnant women fight little people what? or dude, that was real yeah dude they would have crazy battles in the coliseum yeah. with weird like situations like two little people versus one you know normal person or you know two women versus a man and to the death or whatever that was towards the end of the fall of the roman empire i swear to god we're going in that direction yeah. have, and you and you guys have seen those leagues where they have they'll have like uh like five against five yeah, or they'll have that. armor mm -hmm. and it's legit like yeah. they're actually with swords real swords yeah and in shields and they're blasting each other yeah what like this is getting hilarious where are we yeah. gonna go with this well uh, it's the it's the last before everybody dips into the metaverse dude 
It's only it's only around it's around the yeah. I can't. I wish it, maybe Doug could look this up for yeah. me too because I, I I was trying to tell this story we're just to someone burning else. Burning up uh, the dollar. What like what right. what level? Like so, right now we're in what four K. We're getting ready to move into six K. I think or eight K. Eight eight K. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're getting ready to move into eight K. And I thought I heard somewhere that twenty four K. Uh, mm. You cannot tell the difference between reality and virtual reality. That's gonna be weird, dude. And so we and we just went from four. We're jumping to eight right now. So what? You know what I'm worried about? Ten years, less than ten years from now. So here's what I'm worried about with that. When it gets to that point, the propaganda is going to be really crazy. How? It's, first of all, propaganda now is, is very challenging to decipher between what's real and what's propaganda. People fall for shit all the time. Including me, right? We're all oh, yeah. gullible. All the new war propaganda coming out—it's crazy. What are they going to? What are you going to do when you see an yeah, actual you, person saying so? Stuff? Dude, I get the sense. I don't know about you guys, but I get the sense of like, like even like my buddies and I when we 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 share stuff that like, oh, did you see this? Like right away now, which was skepticism. Not, yeah, right away you're skeptical. You, I no, I doubt it. I, I doubt that. I'm sure that's fake. Well, that's so, part of the problem too, because now if real true stuff comes out, it's you like automatically are biased. Right. If it doesn't fit in your narrative, I don't. Because how many times does this happen? You share a study with someone or an article, they'll be like, "Oh, I don't. Oh, that's uh, so and so yeah. network. I don't even believe anything that they say." Yeah. So you're like, "Damn! Like, how do I how do I communicate to people who disagree? <laughs> yeah, in ways to kind of you know maybe come to a consensus." That's that's the challenge. Did you find what level it is, Doug? What I'm really seeing right now is 16k being discussed. What? Nothing about 24k. So um, I'm not saying I'm not sure how it works. Maybe it's 32k. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's somewhere between like 24 and 32 is what I thought I heard is indistinguishable between reality and in being in in the virtual reality. Damn. Speaking of all this tech and stuff, so I was laughing because I saw a post on Twitter. That okay, so here's some companies that have boycotted Russia. So you know the whole deal with going on with Russia, and so all, all these companies are voluntarily saying, "Yeah, we're you're banning our services." Can't have there. Facebook anymore. <laughs> <Okay>. I saw <laughs> one with like Google Maps just like eliminated Russia off the map. Off the yeah, map. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's so, ridiculous. So Facebook, TikTok, Netflix, OnlyFans, and Pornhub now banning Russia. So apparently, what we're trying to do is yeah. make them the most well-read, yeah. smart. Awesome people of all time. <laughs> yeah, 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 Angry, yeah. energetic. Yeah. We're going to take away porn yeah. and social media. And what's next? Junk food? We're going to take away junk food. Yeah. Take that. They're going to get, health, they're gonna get now, healthier and smarter. Yeah, 10 years from now, they're all fit and smart and, you know, like, like super balanced. Like, hey, what's up, guys? So, wait, okay. What, what's your opinion on a lot of that stuff that's happening? Is it massive virtue signaling? Yeah. Okay, you do think it's that. okay. So here's the deal. Because obviously, uh, obviously, cutting Pornhub up is not going to, or stopping it from going to Russia is not doing. You it. have a bunch of like angry, like it's know, more to say, like <laughs> angry <laughs> eighteen year old guys. You know, get, bring yeah. us back. No, okay. So I'm not even going to pretend to really have a, a strong opinion on this. How complex is a very complex uh, situation that's going. I don't think there's a perfect answer, but I will say this: if you look at the historical, just just go look at in, in history the success rate of sanctions and boycotting companies and, uh, you know, or companies boycotting their services or very strong sanctions. What you, and this is just true. So this isn't my opinion. They fail far more often than they succeed. Cause what happens is I you, saw you tweet that and yeah. you got into it a little bit. I was reading your, yeah. your thread on that. And my thing that I would challenge that is it, it it's different though this time than it's ever been before, right? The way the, the the type of sanctions that we can put on as far as as far as how crippling it can be to a country. Oh no, we crippled the shit out of Germany after World War One. We crippled the hell out of them, which gave rise to Hitler. So here's what tends to happen, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm not saying we should. I'm not going to even pretend to to, ha, to be an expert in this. Very complex, but mm -hmm. I will say this again: if you look historically, here's what tends to happen. When you do crippling sanctions on a country- it Just emboldens their leader, right? Well, it doesn't hurt the people at the top because they can get what they want still. What it does, it hurts the people. So now they're, they're, their prices of energy are super expensive. Their food's expensive. They can't get the goods they want. They can't do what they want or whatever. So what, they, what tends to happen is they tend to get angry towards the countries that are issuing the sanctions, mm -hmm. not towards their leadership. What it tends to happen is it, it tends to create this really strong nationalism where they get behind their leader. Because now what's e it's really easy for a leader to say, you it's know, because like us done, versus them, right? Yeah, we did this to, you know, again, we did this to Germany, we did this to, you know, Cuba and lots of other countries. Is these leaders come out and say, look at all these countries that are trying to hurt us. Mm -hmm. We need more power, more sovereignty, you know, get behind us. And they tend to do that. So we may galvanize the, the Russian people behind their leaders 
with a lot of these sanctions. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't do them. I'm just saying it's not as easy as take all their stuff away and they'll do what we want. It may backfire mm. to the point where they support even more so what Putin's doing and they get you get this real strong... Imagine if this happened to America, okay? So right now, if you look at the polls, Biden, very unpopular. All those popularities going up a little bit because we have a foreign threat. This is always what happens. Nonetheless, very unpopular. Imagine if all these major companies started taking away their services and putting sanctions on us. We go to get you know products and services. Everything's five, six times, 10 times more expensive. People are struggling. What can we do? It would be really easy for Biden to get to get everybody behind him. Right, and say, blame it on them. Of course. Yeah. So it's it's not an easy situation. And a lot of these companies are doing it because I think they want to they want to show that they're supporting, but who they're really hurting is are are the like for example, um, God, there was a Russian writer. I can't remember his name. It's, it really pisses me off right now. But there was a Russian writer who wrote about the oppression of communism. He wrote uh, from the gulags, and his books are being banned in some European countries because they're banning Russian writers. Mm. Like the ir the irony of that. Here's somebody that was right. that wrote about you know oppression and like tyranny. Like warnings of yeah, yeah, what and was we're like, happening. yeah, or we're ban banning Russian students from doing certain things. Russian teams, I think the FIFA video game or whatever, the soccer game took the Russian. <laughs> yeah, it's like what do you like? You know, who are you hurting with that? And in the blowback from that might might be a lot worse than what we think we're we're accomplishing. Hmm. I think that's you know we need to consider. Yeah, it's that. so complex. That's why I get so annoyed with uh, anybody that has an opinion about it, uh, but just based off of what mainstream media tells you how to think. Yeah, like let's slow down and think about this. Like yeah. how all this is going to work out. So yeah, of all, well, I think the thing that uh, that interests me the most of what's going to happen or, or what move we're going to do next is that this idea that we're probably going to end up having to print more money. That to me is Dude, what's if you wrote can, like if okay. you wrote like a game plan and you wrote and you're like okay how do we destroy the can dollar just it would be exactly what's happening. How many times we've done this so far since I the know. pandemic? Yeah, because we have inflation was going through the roof anyway. Gas is going through the roof. Uh, you know, food price is going through the roof. Um, now we're going to do these sanctions, which is, you know, gonna, or already wheat is, is exploded in price. So is gasoline. If gas gets more expensive, everything gets more expensive because of how, how dependent everything is on fuel. So price is going to go up. People aren't going to be able to afford things. So the Fed then comes out and says, we're going to help you out by printing more money, which then can cause more inflation. So, you know, it's like a death spiral. Yeah. Cool. So let's see, let's see what happens. Yeah, hopefully, it's not ho looking good. Hopefully, they create a world currency. You know, digital world currency. Stop, no. <laughs> no I mean, kidding. I really think that's what's. Want that. well, I think that's what's coming, and I think that we're going to. I think we're going to see UBI. I really do think that, it, and it's going to be a the case will be made. A government digital currency that's going to help all these people get gas, get food, get these things. Well, they'll, they'll say where you can use it. We'll have limitations. And everybody, to it all or I should say, not everybody. Most people are going to get behind it. They're going to think it because they're all, they're going to be getting tired of ten dollar gas prices and you know seven dollar loaves of bread like you're going to see right. that happen and they're going to go we need this and it's going to be they're just going to let the government get a little bit more of a, a foothold now dude it's yeah. going to be really really weird this next year to two years yeah what's that quote <sighs> from was it the rothschild quote i care not who makes the country's laws so long as uh i make the currency or i control the currency or something like that yeah, there's a lot of power in controlling the currency, especially if it's digital. So I'm not saying this would happen, but I'm gonna let's everybody put on our our tinfoil hats for a second. If the if all currency is digital, it's not it's not hard for an emergency to gather support for now the government to say this group of people, that group of people, you're not allowed to use your money, or you can only use it on this. Yeah, there's gonna be restrictions all over the place. Yeah, what does it say? Permit me to issue and control the money of a nation. And I care not who makes well, its laws. Yeah, that's uh, plus out. you see what happened already in Canada. They that's a perfect example of like being able to freeze accounts just on a button on a whim. Like scary. I'm just going to freeze your account now. You, you have no money. That's scary. That's really scary. who wants to give the government yeah. that kind of power. Well, they already have that power. You just have to go through the court. You just, you just don't want them to have that power without the court. Yeah, that's when I'm like, uh -uh. <laughs> you, because you could do that now, right? They can go to the court sure. and put in and make yeah, a case. Freeze, yeah, freeze anybody's account like yeah, that if but, they get the approval. But they have to get the, yeah. the the court approval. What you don't want is no court approval, and that's just because I mean, well, yeah. That's if your guy's not the guy in power, judicial system. Yeah, dude. What do you mean. think of Elon coming out and saying what he said about? Bro, what? he's he is Tony Stark. I swear to God, in, in, in the movies, he's the last great hope we got for humanity. He said he literally said um, we need to to in the moment to kind of solve this issue. We need to uh, get produce more oil 
and get on track with nuclear, even though he knows that'll hurt Tesla sales. Wow, that's pretty crazy yeah. for someone like that to, to you know, some for someone who's so motivated by money as how he's painted. That's a that's a bad business decision yeah. to promote you know, more oil and stuff like that. It's not like going to go in his favor, but no, yeah. No, not at all. So anyway, so anyway, how's you guys' uh, training been going? I know we talked about working out in the morning stuff. We haven't had a little update on workouts and what, what's going on. Yeah, I'm floating right around three times a week right now. I had a good lift. Over. Right now, it's weekends have been best for me. I'm pretty consistent with hitting both So do you weekend. go Saturday, Sunday? Yeah, I typically hit Saturday, Sunday, and then I get one, maybe two times during the week right now has been kind of like what's happening. Consistent. The traff ever since, uh, you know, Google, I think Facebook, uh, who else came out with the, you know, they're trying, they're starting the coming back to work thing. Oh, yeah. traffic's yeah. gotten it's, bad again. It's oh yeah. It's just thick. gotten what I mean, this morning again was crazy. The last two days I've, it's taken me ways. It's taken me different routes, uh, to get to work because it's just, it's especially in here, right? Once we get into San Jose, it's like so bad. So yeah, training in the morning or he even here, like afterwards, I'm like, shit, I want to get... Because then it takes you an hour and a half. Yeah, because then I take, it takes forever to get home. So. Are you, Justin, yeah. did you get that sled that you were talking about? Yeah. I did, yeah. And so what is it? It's on wheels? How's, how's it yeah, work? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, so it's on wheels and it's um, it, it's it's a torque sled. So basically you can create the resistance of what you kind of... Uh, With no weights? No weights, yeah. Oh. So you just you sort of torque up uh, the amount of like pounds of pressure you want to Now, will that the feel friction. different? Probably it because the different. physics of it is because the way it's the way it's resisting versus like actual. Can load. you load weight on it still too? Uh, yeah, you can. Oh, there's, okay, there's cool. ones that you can actually put loaded weight, you know, and stack it on there. So, um, yeah, I just got that. I haven't really messed with it yet. I'll give you guys an update with that. But I've been doing a lot of the gymnastic rings training and you know all that in my backyard. Uh, when I get home, so I have. When you do that, do you much. put like the tights on and everything, and I get do. like into yeah, the let's, hole? Let's, I want to picture this yeah, right now. I take yeah. a ribbon and then I <laughs> salute myself and then I get after it. What kind of tights would Justin down? would fit Justin's case? <laughs> <laughs> this is like this would be. <laughs> I, I picture like like an evil Bro. Knievel type of like color <laughs> scheme going on. A That's onesie, what, yeah, yeah, like an evil Knievel <laughs> like onesie hey, spandex outfit. Remember uh, who was it? Who remember that wrestler in WWE? But this is back when it was WWF. Was his name Bam Bam Bigelow? Remember he had like the. It was like this cut low. Yeah, like, under his nipple. It's like yeah. it's like the one strap that goes like this across, or, like like old strongman style. Yeah, yeah, Doug, look at Bam Bam Bigelow. That was a that guy was a. I think he had flame tattoo on his head. If I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, I think you're. Yeah, right. I think you're right. He was a badass. Yeah, yeah. yeah remember those stringers? Do you ever work out like that, Adam? Because I know you were a bodybuilder. Did I did. You ever have? I did for a minute. No, you didn't. I did for a minute. Were the nipples like it was just barely? Any, it was like no shirt. You know what I'm saying? It was like the you, that way you could still work out in the gym, but you really were wearing. Swear like, to no God, yeah, yeah, it was like all loose. You could see through it. Yeah. <laughs> Just serratus and yeah, and, I mean, I I, I fully embraced the the men's physique, you know, jacked bodybuilder guy for a minute there, you know. Yeah. So. Look, at, look at that's Bam Bam right there, that guy right there, man. Uh, that's back when wrestling was. Amazing. Is he still alive? Very uh, flamboyant. I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, dude, I met. I told you guys about when I realized how uh, like really damaging pro wrestling is to the body. I let's see, this was I want to say maybe eighteen years ago. He I went died. to. He did die. Forty five years old. Yep. Dang. Holy cow. What'd he die? How'd he die? Uh, let's see here. Uh, drugs, multiple cocaine. drugs cocaine. found uh, in his system. Mm, yeah, cocaine guess, and benzodiazepine. If you, if you read that, the, the Bret Hart biography, I think I've told you guys about it before. Like yeah. they get into detail about that whole, this whole era and just how crazy, like they literally had like doctors there and the guys would like, sh like gro grocery cart, like go in and just whatever prescribe. Like oh, what? uh, Nubane, I think was one of the drugs that they use a lot of. They the pain e everything. Dude. They so I remember I was this was maybe eighteen years oh, ago. Yeah, just constantly in pain. I was at the Arnold Classic, and now when I, when I was a kid, one of the wrestlers that was kind of popular was the Iron Sheik. You guys remember him? Oh yeah, of okay, course. So and he was this was back during like he the, was against Hulk Hogan quite a few times. Yeah, right? dude, kind of Jack Persian dude, right? And I remember so this was eighteen years ago, and so he must have been. Maybe in his fifties, maybe maybe sixty if lucky, but probably late fifties back uh, back then. And he was signing autographs, and he was sitting at this table, and he had uh he had a cane next to him, and he was signing. And I remember he stood up to take a break, and he looked so broken. Mm. And I remember thinking like, oh shit, like this brutal. Yeah, dude, that's brutal. Well, what was that movie? Was it called The Wrestler? The one with um I forget his name, but he's Mickey yeah. Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that was like. It, really good. I felt like that was a good uh, depiction of what it must, you know. It was. I think that's why like. I, I think it won awards and everything for it because of how accurate. I mean, obviously he played a, an incredible role too, but I think that's I think that was like the first like movie that would like really depicted what what like, the, like the behind the scenes how they're just 
you know, struggling in pain or like always trying to get back. We're such interesting top. creatures, right? How we could, you know, you have a passion for something like that. And even though it's just like totally destroying your life and everything like that, that you just continue to go on. For it's that. worth it to you, yeah. apparently, to sacrifice everything for that. Yeah, it's like that uh, the the Olympic gold uh thing they did where they did that survey on on the, on the that's so crazy yeah that's so majority of people said that they would die in five years to win gold yeah which is wow. just in it's just insane uh to me yeah pro wrestlers i don't we typically don't put them up at the top of the list near the top of like incredible athletes but they deserve to be there oh, You're talking yeah. about like massive he, you know, huge, strong, yeah. agile, super athleticism, super like huge physiques, right? That they have to maintain, and then uh, just the constant impact and and trauma they're putting their body through. Like it's pretty, pretty crazy. It's it's remarkable. You know, speaking of these guys, and you know, all the probably the steroid use and everything like that. I want to I want to talk about. I think Doug's taking steroids. Actually. <laughs> like, yeah, something like I that. See, I he see. hasn't told us yet. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, I'm on sneakily. testosterone, and I think he is still scoring higher with his testosterone levels than I am. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm no. So I know. So uh, Doug's been doing something. So he's not taking steroids, but he has been so doing not, something. It's not the kombucha. So first off, Doug, what was your latest? Free testosterone. Not the free. It's the total testosterone. The, oh, total. Sorry. Total. Yeah, yeah. Total testosterone, 1086. Okay. And the That's limit, insane, depending Damn. on the lab, is 1,000 to 1,200. So just for, for the audience, he's at the top of normal, like the top, top of normal. Yeah. And he's, you know, how, how old are you, Doug, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 56. 56. 56 years Going old. Going on 75. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible, right? Yeah. So 56. Top of the top list. Now, before that, your testosterone was 900 or 800? So, yeah, back in July, I did another test. It was 1039. Back in March, it was 954. Okay. Um, but remember a couple of years ago, we went to that, what's it called? Eight, was it Ageless Men or something? What was yeah. the name of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ageless yeah, yeah. Men. Yeah. And I got, it, I got it tested like two years ago. It was, I think, around 560 or something like that. Okay. I wish I had that number in front of me. But what I did after that, I started using the Juve panel That's it, right on there. a regular basis. Uh, and up until like, I don't know, about four months ago, I was using it probably three to four times a week. Now, are you doing it just on your body or are you um, doing it on your- <laughs> I'm, I'm putting it where the sun don't right. shine. Right. Okay. Uh, what I do is I just sit down in my bathroom. I have a panel on my door. Yeah. And I sit there uh, completely naked and just, I mean, I, I listen to something or, or do something while I sit there. Yeah. And uh, I just let that red light, uh, you know, wash over me. Yeah. Um, but over the last three months or so, I've been doing it maybe just once or twice a week. So before my last test, I thought, well, I might see a decline because I'm not doing it as much as I was yeah. before. Yet I did see about a, what's that, about a 45 point. You know, oh, increase. so you so, so you scaled back and you did notice a dip it, down a little bit. No, no I did not. not. I was oh. I was thinking that it would dip down because oh. I was doing less of it. So I have a theory, like, and you see this with a lot of things, that things that induce adaptation, you require a certain dose. Mm -hmm. And then to maintain those adaptations, mm -hmm. you tend to require a lower dose. Yeah, because I've been doing maybe once or twice a week yes. now. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. just not, you know, not as religiously as I mean, is that a I theory that's probably proven? Well, it's proven in a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if, so, so think of all like adaptations like strength. Yeah, think of think of your, your like, the one you love to do the skin. Yeah, your, your so you skin get a certain to, in order to get your skin to tan, you yeah. need so much sun, but to maintain it, you probably need less, right? Yeah. You build strength and muscle, you need so much volume and frequency, but just to keep it, yeah, you need a lot less. Like yeah. I, I feel endurance, you know, flexibility, whatever you name it, mobility. Yeah. So th it makes sense that to get for for Doug to raise his testosterone with by and by the way, this isn't like you know, magic. This is backed by, by studies. So this is legit. So what he, what he experienced isn't just an anecdote. There's studies that show this actually happens with red light therapy. It, it the red light penetrates the cell and gets the mitochondria to, to operate a little bit more effectively and efficiently. And if you shine it, if a man shines it on his testicles, it affects the lighting cells, which produce testosterone or, or luteinizing hormone. And so that makes more. And this is what they've shown in studies. So you did three days a week, went down to one, and you maintained high testosterone. Yeah, Point is we need to bottle this up. Ode de Doug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a new new line. Yeah, it's gonna, no, it's another raise your testosterone five hundred percent. Yeah, well, not five hundred percent. I mean, do you walk around with boners all day long? What's that like? I mean, wow. is it, that's yeah? a, I'm wow. not going to disclose that information. Yeah, I feel okay. like he does. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, <laughs> always wants to know boners. <laughs> so last time we talked about this, I talked about how I'd improve my sleep. Yeah. 
And that's another thing that I haven't been doing quite as well with since last time mm. is I have been going to bed a bit later and not getting as many hours of sleep. And so that was another factor I thought would drop my testosterone, but it didn't do it. Wow. So now do you not that I'm suggesting not sleeping a lot, but now where are other things though in your life, like your your personal life and stress and all the other things like I have plenty of stress. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> right in, no you way. Hey, you notice yeah. Justin how you looked at Adam when he said that? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of stress, Adam. <laughs> I have plenty of stress in my dog, life. Dog. I, a lot of things are going really well, but I have certain elements in my life that do cause stress for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder how much of an individual release. variance there is to things like that. Like the everybody has their thing. Like yeah, I mean, you've talked about uh, you, your personal stuff. You've talked about yours. I've talked about mine. We all have these different things that stress us out yeah. or that we're concerned. About. Like I wonder if those individual things make a bigger difference than things that would be more common for another person, right? So are they? Is it, do we have that of much of a variance on like how we perceive the stress? Totally. Do think oh, about yeah. it. Think about like, like something that stresses you out, right? And how you may have a friend that that same issue wouldn't necessarily stress them out. Right. Of course. Absolutely. It's all how you perceive it, 100%. Like, yeah. it's not, it's the relationship you have with stress. It's not the, the, this itch issue itself. It's the relationship. I also think it's, you know, like chronic stress versus what do you call it? Acute, acute, acute stress. Yeah. So mine's more acute. It's it, adorable. It's adorable. <laughs> yeah. No, it comes in little spurts. You yeah. know, depending on uh, maybe hormone levels of certain people, et cetera. I won't go into detail on oh, that. No, no, no. <laughs> you did not just say that. <laughs> I'm not throwing anybody under the bus or anything like that. Uh, but, it, you know, chronic stress is probably something I really don't deal with, but it's acute stress. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's interesting. That but that's funny. crazy that it's that high. Um, yeah. But, I mean, I trained you for a while. Um, Doug is definitely one of the healthiest people. Just vi in terms of vitality, yeah, yeah that I that I think I've ever met. It's pretty good. It would be cool if we had something, you know, kind of like how we have these glucose monitors right now. If we had something that actually like real time measured testosterone. Yeah, how cool would that be to be able? You imagine to that? It'd be really cool because well, yeah, you could get it a does fluctuate quite a bit. Well, yeah, and you could your, get a your better wife, idea. Your wife of, gets out of the shower. I mean, I, I baby cries. I, yeah, I, uh, I would just be really curious to what things impact it more than others. I mean, yeah. like, right now I'm like I'm, I'm kind of geeking out now on the glucose monitor on the different foods that affect me. Like I was surprised that I could get away with eating the ten tacos and it not crush me, <laughs> but then I had you know a sit once. Was it literally ten? Yeah. Wow, you actually ate, I thought you were exaggerating. 10 tacos. No, no, you no. ate 10 well, individual tacos? Yeah, 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 no, 10 tacos. How big How big were they? I mean, your standard Holy home, shit. Home, home tacos. Really? Bro. Yeah, no, I could crush some tacos. I'm Mexican, wow. bro, come on. So, <laughs> so, you know what I'm so, 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 It's like, it's like asking if you could eat a bowl of pasta, you know what I'm saying, in one <laughs> <Wow>. sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, a whole bowl? You're like, yeah, dude, yeah, come yeah. on. <laughs> or a, a bunch of potatoes. Kind of the same thing, yeah, adjusted with potatoes, yeah, right? I love my potatoes. Hey, speaking of potatoes. Justin, how's your whiskey? Listen. <laughs> so I read this article and the girl's name is uh, uh, Christy Wolf and she is uh, wolf making- or yeah, Wolf or Wolf? Wolf. Yeah, wolf. Wolf. I like Wolf. wolf. There's an L in there. Wolf. Yeah. I did say Wolf. Did you I say Wolf? Wolf? Yeah, wolf? <laughs> wolf. Oh my wolf. God. I didn't, I didn't roll the L. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, um, make fun of my lisp right now. So uh, Christy Wolf is uh, this, this uh, girl who has- these um, you know, short-term rentals on um, uh, Airbnb mm. that have become like world famous. She's only got a handful of them. Oh. One of them is a fucking potato. So look her up, Doug. What? You got to look I at- I think I've heard about this lady. Does she also have like a hobbit? Yes. Uh, oh, that's her. Oh, okay. I love yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen her. This is kind of like it's the idea- genius though. Because what's, it's like the what's, idea we have. What, yes. Yeah. What's genius? I'm so interested in it because- Because we want to open a chain of, of, yes. of, of pizza houses. No. No, that's not bad. what yeah. we I were thinking about. There. Yeah, on, yeah. I, I mean, I just think that, uh, so you want to talk about a space and obviously you, you need a little bit of capital, although she did it on a very, very small budget. But, you know, where this whole short-term rental Airbnb VRBO thing is going is to really compete with hotels. And we've already seen them disrupt that space as it is. Yeah, so experiences, basically. Yeah, and so look at this. She's like in Idaho. She did this big, this potato, like Justin said. Oh, wow, she did a tropical treehouse. Yeah, she did. And they're all, I mean, they're not. Oh, yeah, like, there's a Hobbit house right there. Yeah, wow, they're, that's pretty they're cool. just unique kind of spots and these cool little experiences. And they're not like super high end, but she crushes it. Dude, we should do it like they a, each make like six figures. Have you guys up. ever have you guys ever heard of um, uh, Fantasy Inn? Was that what it's called? You guys ever heard of this place? Mm. They have like like rooms that are themed, and you go with your your spouse, and there's like a 
Like you never heard of this? The Madonna so, Inn's like that. Yeah, the Madonna in, Inn's like that. Oh, yeah. is that San what I'm Luis thinking? Obispo. I don't know. There's, okay. Madonna Inn has like the in San Luis Obispo is like that. It was like cowboy theme in one place, and then the, yeah, 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 tropical in another. And all the rooms are like you know, yeah, you dress one, up and yeah, do your thing. Yeah, we, we um, could do it. We could do it like a, a sex yeah. house. I would be a hundred percent. What do you mean, uh, what? dude? That would no, be brilliant. dude. You know, I I, <laughs> I told you guys a long time. I'm like, I would love if we do like tree housing, but I was like, make it like you know, indoor. Like it's all like Ewoks yeah. village, dude. Yeah, that'd awesome. be that would, Whoa, that what? be a tree weird house. That's all. Yeah. I don't understand. So, so you have all tree houses, Airbnbs, and so they're all connected. I don't think he knows what Endor is. Yeah, no, it's all that's, right. it's fine. that's yeah. the planet. I thought you meant is, indoors, like outdoors. No, no, no. Indoor. Endor is the indoor. planet where yeah. Ewoks you live. You just can't no, just do a Star like, Wars yeah. reference like that and not explain, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Just assume everybody knows what that you is. You like the Ewoks when you were a kid? I did, but I don't remember the names of the planet well, they came from. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, anyway, fine. yeah, I think that would be a great idea. It'd be cool. Yeah, I think yeah. it'd be. Well, there's I, a well, you know, too. Okay, so they actually have this cruise that is all Star Wars. Seems pretty ridiculous, actually. But if I was like, if my kids were a little bit younger and were still into Star Wars, like I was, like I totally would take them on it. But like you wake up and like these people in character and costume, like wake you up, they bring you in and like you do all these missions and stuff like on the actual ship. See, look, that's Pretty Endor. Cool. Look, look how cool that is right there. Yeah, that, that would be cool. super rad. So well, we, have, we have ones like this uh, up here, not too far from you. Well, there's they're, one, they're this guy, that too. Nelson guy who does the tree houses, like I watch all his uh, shows all the time. He makes rad tree houses, but like he has a whole, um, sort of cluster of them together that he rents out. How close are you? Be very honest, Justin. How close are you to being to going to these Comic Con things, completely <laughs> dressing up? I'm totally. T I toe the line every day. Yeah, yeah. I, for reals, right? So if your wife was down, you would go dress up and. Have oh a yeah, I mean it's no, I wouldn't. Like, what I do just, you mean no? No, I mean I'd hang out. Like I would go, but I wouldn't go in costume. I think that's a lie. I totally think. Yeah, you're I think lying. I, I don't like, think I would like, take his wife. I think I like, would take hang one out of us with, to convince him to I do it. I can hang out with people <laughs> like that. I'll actually test it. him. Like I won't even. We'll bring it up like randomly. <laughs> but like, hey, I really want to do this. Be like, I'm so down. I'll tell you, it's just like this. It's like our buddy Tate Fletcher, right? He was actually in. Uh, Mandalorian, yeah. right? And so he was at, got to put on the outfit and all that, like become one of the Mandalorians. And I'm like, dude, if, if I was actually like an extra in one of them, then I'm all in. Yeah, I'm actually there. Like, I, I, otherwise, so I'm just like, here's how you like, another door. My ex girlfriend who tours, tours, or, tours you know, you get to be like an extra, <laughs> your face is covered, but then you tour yes. around all the comic oh, cons. 100% I will live off that for the rest of my life. <laughs> okay. I was in this for that one second. <laughs> this I saw is, it. Here's how you would justify it. This is how Justin would do it. I know it. It, it would have to be a somewhat functional costume. So, like, real armor. Oh, no, this can actually block bullets or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Then he would do it. Yeah, so I could just punk Because it has the Mandalorian steel or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Ga Gaspar? Yes. Gaspar? What's it called? What? What's the metal? Am I fucking it? No, everything? Beskar. 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 <laughs> way off, dude. He got so mad. <laughs> so irritated he got with me for messing up. Hey, when's the next one? I'm already missing the, the Star Wars series right now. When's the next? Who's who's the next one? And the do you next know one goes back to it goes back to Mandalorian, I believe. But I mean, we've all been waiting. You know, us in the community here. Uh, <laughs> Obi Wan, your friend in your pocket. The Obi Wan series. The S S W community. The is that is it Obi Wan? Is that who's supposed to be next? Yeah. Well, uh, no we're, way. We're supposed to get a trailer for it over the uh, Super Bowl, and uh, nobody Look at came you all through because you didn't get your trailer. No, no <laughs> way, Bullshit, dude. So there's no really good series on, right? I finished. Uh, John no, you know, oh, want... they're moving on to uh, Moon Knight. So I don't yeah. know if you know that Marvel character. So but. I actually, as a kid, I used to I used to buy comic books, and for a second there, Moon Knight was a new comic, and I had like five of the comics. It's kind of an interesting character, though. So I wonder how they're going to just <clears throat> they're going to show him. Yeah, it's interesting because it's. Uh, I mean, they're, they're trying, trying to, to compare him, him to Batman, yes. right? But it's not quite Batman, and and he gets all these like. So I don't really know the backstory. I tried to kind of look it up. I think it's like Egyptian god power. Yeah, or so he gets like, something like transferred from some ancient uh, Egyptian. I don't know. It's not the, like, Batman's got kind of a cool he, costume. It's a little more realistic, too. Like, he's just a rich guy that has a bunch of cool shit. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I'm Batman. Yeah, like, we'll, he just talks like that. We'll see. It'll, it'll be interesting. <laughs> did, did any of you guys see the new Batman? I heard it was really good. I heard it was really good, too. Yeah. It's I like three it was, hours, too. I haven't seen it. You yeah. have to go to the theater, I do right? want to see that. Yeah, yeah I, I always like it, it didn't open on you know how H sometimes they do with HBO or Showtime like yeah, yeah he's no. got the best villains like that that makes that who's the villain in this one uh, Riddler I believe oh Riddler and then um I don't know if they have it's not Kingpin or like a, a the Penguin guy Penguin it might be I think uh, they did I, I thought they they brought back a lot of the bad characters you know what's cool with with Batman is it either goes campy 
like it did with Val Kilmer and that series. Jim Carrey. Jim yeah, Carrey. Or it goes dark. Like like scary. Dark. I hear it's like I that. Like dark. I, I heard like... it's really good. I mean, I, people say it was the best DC movie yet. So okay. Oh, all right. yeah, that's okay. that's what people are saying. I we'll see. I mean, I don't. I don't I'm going to watch sure, it. I can't wait. You, you know what? I just started last night. I started the uh, Uber series. You would like that, Doug. Oh yeah, yeah. About yeah. the company Uber. Yeah. Oh, is that? That's why you're all, all oh, about it. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah it who's sent me down who's the, the main person? That wasn't it? Uh, I don't know his name. He's a big actor uh, though. Gordon yeah. something. Thank you. I'm so Gordon terrible Levin, when it comes maybe? to like famous people. Um, yeah. It was. It's. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, it, it. So it's got. It's a. It's a series, right? It's like one of those. Like, what do you call it when it's? It's like a docu series, but it's not. But it's. It's reenacted. Is there drama? A, drama is a dramatization. Yeah. Is of a, of a documentary. Is that what? Yeah, how you yeah, say? Yeah, I didn't yeah. know if there was like a name for the what uh, it, drama series because it's not. Yeah. It's not like you know. It's based on. It's all like reenacted, but yeah, also yeah, embellished. Yes, a bit. exactly. Yeah. So that's uh, so. But it's uh. So yeah, I'm, I'm what I'm really interested about. It makes me want to go read on it. Like if there's a book related to this is how much do they embellish because um, the original CEO of Uber was quite wild. I didn't realize hmm. how kind of uh, crazy out there he was. Well, Uber, it's, oh, it's so, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So, oh yeah, that's right. Uber is such an interesting story. It's a, because the, the whole taxi cartel was so strongly regulated, in particular to protect the people who are already in there. That it got to the point where if you wanted to buy a medallion in New York City, it was like a million dollars, right? Which yeah, give you the ability to have taxis, cost you a million bucks. It was so limited, and we all know the stories. We do because we're old. It was enough, like a cartel, dude. You couldn't you couldn't get a taxi in New York. It was, yeah. it was like a, a common thing, right? You know, finding a taxi is so hard or whatever. Uber, because technology moved faster than regulators can regulate, it hit the market. And then that's it. People liked it, but people tried to shut it down. But good luck. So, do you know his the CEO story? And if I, I don't even know if he, I don't think he's the CEO anymore. I believe that. Could you check that? Did, yeah, I, didn't I know think much he's about no him. longer the CEO. Yeah, I remember something happened like just like a year or two ago, or maybe longer. It was right before COVID. Like something happened where he they he stepped down or whatever. Or they let go of him, and now there's a new CEO. So I'm I'm really interested in how that how, how it gets to there because. He's definitely a, 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 a kind of a wild guy, dude. I didn't know he was he was like this, which probably had to be considering what he was going up against because it, it talks about what you're saying right now, Sal. And there's many times where probably 95% of your average CEO would have laid down or just said, mm -hmm. fuck it and go the other direction. But- I mean, he kept he kept pushing. He did some cool shady shit to kind of get get uh, get by. Like he did some pretty funny stuff at one point, And I don't know how true this is. There was uh, the I think this was when they were in Portland when they started to infiltrate Portland. They had like the city started having uh, these guys that would uh, write fines to every to try and so they would screw summon the drivers. Uber and then give them a fine. yes. They would summon Uber. They'd get on there and then they literally write them a ticket. Uh, and I can't remember what on what basis, but something based off the sit some bullshit rule that the city had or whatever. And they were using that to just just fuck the drivers so they couldn't afford to keep doing Uber right. And they did this like, like just does black ops. Uh, they do totally illegal. Like figure out the, those people's cell phones. And then they uh, like they couldn't get an Uber. Yeah. So that and they, they but it would show like it was coming. So they're all standing out there waiting. So they could there's like five of these guys that were ticketing all these Uber drivers. And that's how they got them to stop was they just they couldn't get a ride. Oh, and they did shit. it by tracking their cell phones and then basically like sending them ghost Ubers. That and, they and by the order. way, and people now take it for granted. The way it was positioned was uh, Uber's hurting the little guy. It's hurting the poor taxi people it's you know we need to right. protect them when in fact it was actually giving them jobs and it's just it's just better opportunities and, who, and do either one of you ever use a taxi Never. you know it's funny no way how shitty taxis were until uber came and made them had to compete now yeah. now if you go into a taxi now you can pay with it credit card you can pay with credit like card bo and like terrible music there was no competition yeah. they could no. do whatever the hell they wanted no. which is anyway speaking of uh, of companies so you guys know i've been i've been working with organifi for new working on new products yeah where are we with it? i know you've been talking I'm to them a lot i'm excited i'm not allowed to talk about the new flavor uh, that they're coming out with. Am I allowed to talk about the product that's going to have a new flavor? I don't think so. I don't think you can say <laughs> anything. Can say anything. So you can just like drop some wow, that's obscure reference hush, hush, if well, that you sucks. wish. Well, anyway, uh, they've they're, they're coming out with some new flavors of some of their very popular products. And oh, okay, yeah, and we and we're working on a specific product together. I'm excited. It's going to be good. Is I, it like an update of a current uh, product they have? Yeah, yeah can it's we a even current go product, or or product, or product, or product, or product, flavor. new flavor. 
And new, and the flavor. I think is the incredible. very first call that we all were on. I think she alluded to this. I think I remember her saying it That's and saying exciting. how excited she yeah, was when okay. it's coming. So What's, it's now. When, do we know, Doug, when it's dropping? Uh, like, well, yes, we do. It is March 22nd. Oh, okay. so soon. Very, Very soon. Good. Yeah. So. Yeah. What's cool about them is I get on the phone with, um, they have someone who manages their marketing. Are someone, you talking to Hannah? Is that who you're talking to? Hannah? I think so. Uh, someone who yeah, manages like their, who understands their supply chain and where they could get products. And then someone who understands formulations. Mm -hmm. They really know their shit. So we sit down and, t and talk and I say, Hey Sal, what kind of product would you like to see? And I say, well, I like this, I like this and that and that. And then, you know, within like 48 hours, I'll get a response. Well, we can get this, this would cost this much. What, what do you think about the price? What do you think about combining it with this particular thing because of its anti-inflammatory effects or whatever? Well, so they it's really always cool. knock their formulations out of the yes. park. It's anything you're learning tasty. about being on that, that side? Like getting into that a little bit, or is there anything you're finding out? Like you know, we, well, we were speculating about how hard it would be to get certain products because how expensive. Nothing that I nothing I haven't learned anything now, but I did learn a while ago when we first got into this business that you can't just say I'm going to make a supplement and then throw these ingredients in there, yeah. because I I was naive to how challenging it would be to get certain ingredients, mm -hmm. how to get the price to be how right, to source them, yeah, and the taste, right? Some ingredients taste terrible. So if you throw them in a powder, you try flavoring it however you want. So it tastes totally terrible. Hey, what's up? Check this out. Uh, do you like root beer? Uh, how about vanilla soda or cherry or strawberry? Delicious, right? Full of sugar though. Why the heck would anybody who's uh, interested in being fit and healthy drink sodas besides the fact that they taste good? Well, you can now because of Olipop. Olipop makes incredibly tasted, tasting sodas that are low or almost no sugar, low in calorie, high in fiber. I know it sounds weird, soda that's high in fiber, but it's true. And they contain components and ingredients that are good for gut health. Okay, so it's legit, by the way. I'm not making this up. Gut health promoting sodas that are very low in calorie with low to no sugar and high in fiber. I swear to God, they taste amazing. I'm not making this up. It's all real. Go check them out. Head over to mindpumppartners.com. Click on Olipop and then use the code MindPump for a discount. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Megan from the Philippines. Hi, Megan. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, thank you for taking my call. It's such an honor to be even here with you guys right now. So I guess it's like I'm going to throw the question in. Um, right now. So I'll just read off my question I sent to the email. So I have a question when it comes to using queuing to improve my lifts. So when it comes to the compound lifts, is it better to have external or internal queuing in mind? So I recently watched a video like um, from Jeff Nippard talking about that. And he generally stated that when it comes to compound movements, External cueing is more useful while in smaller uh, isometric movements like curls, um, internal cueing is more useful. So my basic understanding of internal cueing is like looking at your body's movements and mechanics. Um, Sal, I think you talked about it before where you focus better on the action of the muscle. Um, and then while ex internal cueing is trying to actively flex that certain muscle of the exercise while performing it. So like if you're doing a bicep curl, you're like really like squeezing your biceps, something like that. So I really want to increase my strength in these lifts. So what are your guys' thoughts on this? And does it actually really matter as much? Yeah. So Megan, so um, I'm going to um, maybe rephrase your question a little bit just to get a little clarity. So in essence, what you're saying is on one method would be to perfect the form and the other method would be to feel the actual target muscle. Is that kind of what you're asking? Yeah, I think so. Because um, when it comes to like, um, I think you mentioned it in the podcast, like a few episodes before is um, how you can like sort of um, how you move like in a squat, you can make it more glute focused or more quad focused. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that no. I, okay, so I understand now. So, so this is a good example. Of, Great example of how YouTube guys like to overcomplicate. Shit. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> people in our, in our space really make things more complicated. Yeah, why focus on these things. Huh? I think than than they need to be. So, and and there is there, there is this is uh, like a false choice. And what I mean by that is, 
You don't have to choose That's one right. or the other. They're both very valuable. Um, they both have lots of value. So my answer is going to be both. Um, I think both are very important. On the one hand, if you're trying to feel a specific muscle that you may be wanting to develop, especially if you feel like it doesn't connect very well to certain exercises, you probably want to focus on feeling that particular muscle. And on the other hand, perfecting your biomechanics and technique are going to make an exercise more effective because you're going to have more efficient, safe biomechanics. They're both very important. And, and what, I'll, what I'll say to you, Megan, is be very careful with the fitness personalities on social media and in YouTube and just new media in general, because what they tend to do is they tend to overcomplicate things when they're trying to make a point or they're trying to create they throw a lot of absolutes out there. Yeah. Like this is the way you have to do it always. Yeah. And, and, and that's really what's happening here. They're both important. They're both very valuable. You can definitely have ice cream and cake here. So you don't have to pick one or the other. They're both delicious and they're well, both going to have not only value. that, but I, I think uh, I, I hate something like this, right? To say that one is more important than the other based on that. There's such an individual variance with everybody. So how I'm cueing a client has uh, everything to do with where I see they're struggling the most, right? So if I have a client that isn't connecting to the muscle, like Sal is saying, I'm going to focus more mm -hmm. on these internal cues. If I'm looking at your movement and it's all over the board, right? We're not, and you're yep. not, you're not moving properly. I'm going to talk more towards the external cues, but I'm going to use both right. at my disposal. Or even setting up for your compound lift. Like I'm going to focus more on my intrinsic type of tension and being able to stabilize my joints before than unracking and then I'm going to get into the actual mechanics of the lift as I'm doing that trying to maintain what I first focused on so it's like both of them have to work simultaneously yeah Megan for you specifically let's talk a little bit about what your goals are is there a specific exercise or a specific muscle that you're trying to focus on oh yeah it's definitely my squat um, recently so um, just like a small like con context just to like give a little idea where, where I'm coming from. So like, I would guess say last um, December uh, or the from October to December, I was making good progress on my um, overall like um, main lift. So like my squat, deadlift and, and all that. And um, that got interrupted. Um, my training got interrupted because our town was like hit by a typhoon or like a hurricane. For you guys so basically i took a so i cut way back on training so i what's really nice is that i had the i followed your guys's the maps 30 day calendar thing where it was like very self-paced and very like um incorporating mobility and stuff so recently last month i um sling stabilized here and then um we got i got to go back to a home gym um so the gym i was going to before that was like a home gym with like um just the not even the olympic barbell just like the basic really thin kind of barbell so mm. it was like a shock for my body and like a reset to my mind that i started going back to the olympic barbell in the gym like the commercial gym and i was like so i had to like recalibrate like what exactly my weights are uh my p my so and so like my training weights are on my compound list so that's why now I'm taking like a step back to really focus on um, like my form and all that. That's why I like really wanted to learn about the external internal cueing stuff. Mm. But I guess um, from your guys' answers, I think I should like, I guess you guys are saying that I should just focus on the form right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's generally probably a good idea is to, is to perfect your form. But if you run into a situation where, you know, you're doing your squats, for example, and you're not developing the parts of your body that you really want to focus on, then, you know, focusing on the muscles themselves can definitely help. But I will say this, Megan, when, it, when I'm training somebody from beginner to intermediate, um, unless I'm correcting an imbalance, I almost always fo focus more on form. And as they get stronger, then we can move more towards feeling particular muscles. But if I take a beginner and have them do a squat, I'm not saying, hey, let's feel in your glutes or your quads. I'm like, let's get your form really good. Let's get you really connected and really stable. And then as we continue, then we'll start to notice things. And they'll say, oh, my quads are developing more than my glutes, or I don't feel this in my hamstrings. And then we'll focus more on the on the muscle feel. But I, I think you're, you're, you're on the right 
track for sure. I think that that's with everything, right? You think of like even like a sport like uh, baseball, right? Before a baseball coach is going to teach a, a player how to direct the ball into the left field, the right field, down the center, on the ground, or a pop up, he's going to teach him the fundamentals, how to swing the ball, uh, swing the bat yeah, properly. Yeah. So you want to get the mechanics of the movement mm -hmm. down really well, and then as you get that down really well, now we can start to talk about the more intrinsic things like, okay, now when you're at the bottom of the squat, try and fire your glute more or when you get to the top squeeze you know like then you can start to get into the the more technical aspects of the movement first perform the movement get really good at the movement practice it and then we can start to to talk about yeah, some of the other and internal timing tuning. helps as well you know with that too just you know if that's a focus where it's like you know glutes aren't responding and firing and that's something you need to keep addressing getting that establishing that near muscular connection that's something you can do and prep you know before you get into these compound lifts to to you know get them to contribute a bit more yeah megan you know if i'd like if you don't have maps anywhere i'd like to send that to you that way you have a workout program you can do if you lose access to a gym again like you did before now the maps 30 day.com is phenomenal as well uh, maps uh, anywhere kind of takes it to another level, um, and it's longer, right? It's not just thirty days; it, it takes you a little, little, little longer. Do you have maps anywhere by any chance? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, we'll send that over to you, Megan. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks right. for calling in. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You know, I'm going to come to the defense of uh, who she talked about, Jeff Nippert. I think I've seen his com his content, and for, you know, for the most part, I think it's okay. I think when you're making so much content, you start to run into the situation where you're like, well, I've already talked about this. I talked about that. Let's start to split you hairs get in and, the weeds a little bit. Yeah. And I think this confuses people, right? Like which one is better for what? And um, I could see what he might have. I haven't seen this video, what she's referring to. I can see what he might be trying to communicate, but I can yeah. also see why this would confuse the hell. Well, I think this a is, new person. I, I think it's more, and I mean, uh, our team is as guilty of this too. It's, it's what feeds the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So you need to have something that you, where it is absolute, don't do this. This is better than that. Like yeah. those type of, uh, headlines will grab people. So yes, in his defense, um, I, I know what he's doing, right. But this is, I think as the consumer, and I think that's the, the the biggest point to make to people that are listening right now is that's where you got to be careful with, including ours, okay, including our YouTube content is that, you know, you, you have to take it a little bit with a grain of salt because of the creators, obviously it's in their best interest to get the most amount of views that they can get. And so they title it in a way that is going to draw the most attention, not necessarily the best way to teach. Yeah. So it's kind of a, I mean, it's something that we ran into at the beginning of the podcast, at the beginning of mm -hmm. creating content for YouTube was, you know, we came from a, a perspective of just teaching and educating like we did as coaches for so long. But unfortunately, we've had to find this way to, okay, you know, title it in ways that are compelling. I mean, this is how our single topic episodes are. This is how we do fitness tips. Like we've had to do this. Otherwise, people won't click. People won't pay attention. So you have to do these kind of attention grabbers. But here's the drawback of that is that you take somebody who's like now way overthinking something right now that is not that important. Like, yep. you know, For sure. It's the consumers driving this. Yeah. Right? Because we all want simplistic answers to everything. And so that's or what, absolutes, right? This well, is better I mean. than that. That's what simplifies it yeah. because you're saying like, this is really what you need to focus on only. Yeah. <laughs> that's not true, yeah. Yeah. but, but it does work in favor of somebody searching. Yeah. And I will say this, uh, when you get started uh, for the first couple of years, you're probably better off focusing on just form and technique. You're practicing perfect form and technique. As you start to develop and as muscles get stronger and you start to get more muscle, then you're really focusing on muscle contraction and where I'm feeling the, the, the exercise starts to become more valuable. But it's almost, mm -hmm. unless you're doing correctional exercise, you know, there's definitely value there. But for the most part, just, you know, perfect form and technique and practicing that in the beginning yeah. is probably a better I way. I think you want to establish that first. So that way, you know, that's what your body knows how to navigate and respond. And yeah. It becomes sort of in your subconscious. So, I mean, it does benefit you to put that kind of work in 
first and then you build upon that. Part. I think that's how you do anything with when it exactly. comes to movement and sports totally. like that. I mean, that's you would never teach a, it's a skill. You would never teach a basketball player how to do a, you know, beh you know, between the legs, behind the back pass yeah. with yeah. a spin windmill dunk before yeah. you taught them how to dribble with their left dribble with their yeah. right or, you know. or a pitcher here, here feel where the stitching on the ball is and the direction of it. What, you know, first learn how to throw. A well, yeah, He's not going to throw a curve ball before he yeah. throws a, a standard fast pitch. Right. So I just right. think that's the same concept is that, you know, all movements, you, you want to practice the, the technique yeah. of the movement first. Get now the foundational yeah. elements and then let's build. Now you get the movement down yeah. really well. Now as a coach, I can give you these little subtle cues to get you to feel it in different yeah. areas. So. Was my baseball analogy. Okay. Did yeah, I yeah, that right. All right. Every started, once in a while. You started to kind of waver off. Yeah. We got yeah, you back. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Our next caller is Emily from Canada. Hey, Emily, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having my call. I feel like very privileged to be on here. Um, I'll just go right in. So I'm sure you saw my little intro, but just to give you a little background, I live in Quebec, uh, Canada. I'm 23 years old. I am a gym freak, but I'm so but I'm also an athlete at the highest level in my sport. I play ringette at the highest competitive level. If you're not familiar with ringette, let's just pretend I play hockey. They do share a lot of similarities. Um, I'm looking to be selected in a senior national team to represent Canada in the next ringette world championship. Again, comparing it to hockey, I would be training to make the Olympic team, that's the level I'm currently playing at. But my challenge is the following. So with the freak frequent opening and closing periods where I live, my ringette season, let's just say hockey season, that is supposed to be eight months long, is now being crushed into two months. Hmm. So that means I'm playing around two, three, and eventually four games almost every weekend. You can imagine the stress that is put onto my body in that short period of time. The thing is, I don't know how to train during the week to complement those high-intensity workouts. How would you recommend I train in between those high-intensity uh, weekends. I want to give time to my body to heal, but also improve certain aspects of my game. Ooh, do you guys question. do you guys know that they're they're dealing with that with the uh, NBA right now? So because they did the back to back seasons so close, oh, we're trying to make up games. Yeah, and you know they, they play a long season, right? And just didn't how important those extra month or two off of recovery, of course. Was. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's more injuries happening right now in the NBA than like before, and they're attributing a lot of that to this of course this rest period and, and lead up time and so it's very similar you know situation that she's in right here that is kind of unfortunate and personally yeah. for me uh if i was training you everything is going to be focused on recovery like we are mm -hmm. not really doing much of any strength training in a season that is this intense where she's talking about multiple games in a single day you're yeah, basically right. playing almost every day if you're not practicing you're playing like yep. yeah emily yeah. We, we you know i didn't know what the sport was i had to look it up very interesting it is very similar to, to hockey i had no idea it existed but uh i could see how strenuous it would be on the body think of it this way emily off season is when you want to improve strength and explosiveness and agility in season, your training goal should be to prevent injury. Yeah, it's so preservation. You're, you're not what you don't want to do is try to improve and push with strength and agility and explosiveness while you're also in this very intense season. So the workouts, and I'm, I'm going to do quotation mark here. The workouts in season are mobility and recovery focused. You're not in the gym trying to get stronger. You're not in the gym trying to get faster and trying to push yourself. What I want you to do is go to the gym during the season and think to yourself, how can I make my body feel better? That's probably going to be mobility, active stretching, maybe even static stretching, depending on you know where you might feel tight. Mm. Massage. You could utilize things like sauna and, and cold dips. Um, you could do things that are recuperative, right? Uh, re, to regenerate, recuperate the, the body. When you're off season and the season's over and you take a few weeks to kind of Get your, get your recovery in, then I would focus on now I can get stronger. Now I can get more explosive. Now I can push myself a little bit. But don't do both at the same time. That is a yeah. recipe for injury. Yeah, I would just echo that. But um, this is where, too, you can 
add intensity to these mobility sessions. So don't think of it as, um, you know, just light kind of passive stretching, like really focus. You can bring in kin stretch type moves. We do this in Prime Pro. Adam has a whole, I don't know if you've gone through, you know, that uh, specific workout that he did, you know, on the webinar. Um, yeah, well, I both, I followed both webinars and I do like do those uh, mobility drills quite often. I try to do it at least three to four times a week. Oh, beautiful. But yeah, now great. with everything going on, like you said, it's very strenuous on my body. Yeah. And last time I played, I needed like two full days of not doing anything because my body mm. was just yeah. completely okay. destroyed. So I get what you're, yeah. you're saying just focus on recovery you know what emily on on those days that you need to just do nothing static yeah. stretching is actually quite valuable here now static stretching you don't want to do right before you play or right before you work out right but if yeah. it's those two days afterwards and you're just sore yeah and stiff what you can do is you can do just good old-fashioned passive mm -hmm. sit in a stretch hold a stretch you know focus on different muscles just that'll help uh, facilitate recovery. Now, when you're when you do feel like you can do more mobility work, then Maps Prime Pro type stuff would be good. Now, the webinars are not specific to an individual, right? Uh, Adam and Justin both did webinars, and they were very general. I suggest going through Maps Prime Pro and following the movements that are more specific to your needs and your body. Do you have access to Prime Pro? I don't have my uh, pro now. Okay, we'll send that to you. And then what I, what I suggest you do is go through the movements and find the ones that you find the most value in and then do those uh, those particular movements. That way it's more individualized. Yeah, and I think too, like uh, besides stack, like the dynamic, so just to get more blood flow, but like really keep it low intensity, um, it, it just, from what it sounds like, it just sounds like you could, um, you know, benefit from just really, really light movement, uh, to make sure that, you know, the joints are responding and, and, uh, you know, you're still providing stability there. I think that's, that's the biggest thing is really to focus on your end ranges. So whatever position you may be in, you know, split stance wise, laterally, uh, you know, twisting and, and turning your body. Like I would focus on, you know, some isometric type poses with that and just kind of work your way through that. So you're making Make sure your body responds and and is able to kind of protect and and secure the joints. As far as any uh, anything to add to the training, um, the only thing I would consider on top of that is maybe skills training. So if you have specific skills in your sport that you're trying to improve, and you're like, hey, I feel pretty good this week, and you want to go down to the gym or you have free time, then you know. Well, work. I am I am practicing two twice a week on ice as well. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're so. you're, you're you're doing you're good. You're doing a lot. Yes. Yeah. So. yeah, you're doing yeah. a lot. <laughs> really think in season. You put your mind. This is the mentality. When I'm not playing, if I if I have the energy and I feel like I can do something or I should do something. Do things that facilitate recovery. Mm -hmm. Don't do things that are going you know, to give you another workout. Okay, and that's in season. Off season, totally different. Uh, but I look when you, when when I've had clients who've been in situations similar, very competitive, and on the days when they're beat up, I'm t just relaxed, static stretching. Now, when when you do this, it's not a, a workout. So what you don't want to do is get into a static stretch and hold your breath and push through it. That's not what's going to help. As you're in the static stretch, breathe calmly, get the body to relax. And what you're trying to do is get the CNS to kind of relax, Chill out. get some blood flow. Yes. And what it is, it, it facilitates this, you know, this parasympathetic state that'll help with, uh, with recovery. Well, besides that, I mean, because you're competing at such a very high level, like this is where products like a juve light, like a red light therapy might make sense yeah. for you to actually add in, invest in a little bit, because honestly, the recovery part is so crucial to, you know, keeping you, uh, in your sport and performing at your highest. Yeah. When, when do you, when do you, uh, try out for the Olympic team or is that in a, a few years? So, um, I have the, the competition coming on, um, in April, but that's with my like local regional team. And then the big, the big event is happening in October. So I'll have the testings happening over the summer. This wow. That's super cool. Well, yeah, good luck with that. Oh, that yeah, that sounds luck. awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you. No problem. And All we'll right. send, we'll send maps prime pro to you. Okay. So you can individualize it for yourself. Thank you so much. You got it. I, I, did not understand this as a new trainer. I, as a new trainer, I'll never forget my, one of my first athlete clients came in, in season. And I thought, oh, my job is to get them to improve while in season. And so I beat them yeah. up. 
Yeah. And they were the performance the, dropped. The irony of this is it's not just you being a new trainer. I, you see this even in sports. It still it's, blows my it's, mind. It's everywhere. I mean, look at this. Look at how, how high of a level that she's at, and she's reaching out to us right now. Yeah. You would think that yeah. you would have coaches and yeah, trainers – around a person like this that would be advising their, their athletes like that but it it happens all the time and oh. it blows my mind every time i see it. it's like at that level you would think that you have some of the best minds and how to train and they just no, not the not smart true. players uh you know do the group workouts but then they go actually hire their own That's trainers right. outside of that because it's they, they need that extra individualized attention and, you know, that being said, you see all the best performing athletes out there. They invest a lot of money in the recovery process. And I think that that's something to consider. Our next caller is Marty from Texas. Marty, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited to be here. A huge fan. Thank you so much for having me Thank and you. uh, for right. your time. Uh, my question is, um, my girlfriend is doing a bikini competition, and when she does this, I like to kind of run your split that you guys have for these programs, which is aesthetic um, split, then PED. I ran this last time she did it. I ran into problems when I had PED. It was, uh, I think, too much training. I had trouble sleeping, a little bit of tendinitis, and I ended up having to kind of stop it because I just didn't want to get any worse symptoms than I already had. So I wanted to write in because she's about to do this again. And I kind of want to push myself one more time, but I'm a personal trainer. And I know that we tend to think we could do more than we can actually do. Uh, I know you, you guys say it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I just want to see what you guys think uh, as far as what maybe I could do, maybe modify it, um, see what you guys think. Yeah. You know, Madi, what's funny is that we almost didn't release MAPS PED because the volume and frequency yeah. and just the total workload. It's insane. We knew that yes. it would pose two problems. One, it would attract the fitness fanatics who love to go harder than they need to. And two, it was inappropriate for most people. So all those symptoms that you were feeling are definitely indicative of it being too much, mm -hmm. which means it's just not going to be effective. So I don't think MAPS PED is the program uh, that you or your girlfriend should be following, honestly. There's very, very few people that will be able to go through a double split routine and actually see their body improve through it. MAP split alone is a tremendous amount of volume and it's probably more appropriate for 95% of people at this uh, at this particular level. So I, I wouldn't even do PED. I would stick with MAP split. Now, if you want to do a split routine, so if you like the dividing the workout up so that you do some of the workout in the day and some of the workout in the evening, you could do MAP split that way. Okay, so you could do a regular map split workout. Let's say today is, I don't know, chest, shoulders, and triceps. And you could do chest and shoulders in the morning and triceps at night, or chest in the morning and shoulders and triceps at night. So you can turn map split into a double split routine, uh, and it'll have more appropriate levels of volume than, than map PED does. You could also just run split over again and or run map aesthetic. Like, you know, we wrote like kind of the the order of operation with the programs for someone to follow in the you know ideal scenario, but that doesn't mean that you can't run you know maps aesthetic uh, two times in a row or map split two times in a row. The whole program is uh, periodized, so you could easily do that and not run in any trouble. Now, I would never recommend somebody staying with the same program for a year or two, but you technically could get away with it and be okay. So if you saw great results running aesthetic and split, I would actually just run back through it again. So as you go uh, maps aesthetic, you go map split, and then instead of going to PED, go back to maps aesthetic or run split again. And I think you'll have tremendous results. Yeah, totally. I mean, with something like maps PED, it's like you got to have the combination of really, really, really rare genetics or drugs. Super. Yeah. You know, <laughs> anabolic yeah. steroids might yeah. be, might be part of that, might not, but you definitely have to have these really, really good Recovery genetics, you have to have everything be perfect. Diet, sleep, stress be perfect. Um, and even then, you know, you're kind of towing the line. But if you, I mean, everything you listed, right? Difficulty sleeping, yes. joint pain, like you were definitely doing too much. And that just means you're not going to get nearly the results you could if you did reduced volume or reduced frequency. So I think aesthetic and split 
stick with those uh, with those two programs. And if you want to modify them a little bit to work on specific parts of your body, it's totally fine. Or even if you want to split the workouts up, so you do one in the AM, one one in the PM. If you like that, you can do that as well. But it's, PED sounds like it was it was too much. I definitely would would tell you not to do that one. Yes, no, it was it was too much, and and I I love your podcast. So once I started feeling the symptoms that I had never felt ever, um, I knew right away I had to bail on it. And a, a split is great. That that seemed to be fantastic. And I think splitting it the way you said um, probably going to help out. You know, so that I don't get those symptoms, but I could still push the intensity. And I roam in, in aesthetic. I, I usually what I do is I'll go into something hard like split, and then I'll kind of go back to aesthetic and kind of run performance. Shout out to Justin. I know you're chilling right now. It's an aesthetic question, but I love performance. I I love performance and I, I, that one keeps me honest. And then I'll I'll go back to something hard, like, like uh, split or, or strong. And this is the first time I'm kind of was going and just scaling back up and I never really went back down. So I think the advice you gave me works out great. Thanks, Madi. And then do you have, I'd like to give you something. Um, you said your girlfriend's competing. Uh, does she have access to like yes. Max Prime Pro or Prime? Listen, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm a trainer. I already got those. Uh, Adam's 100% right when, it, when he said that that's what yeah, keeps my client idea. here. Um, and and I, already, I have most of your programs because I, you guys are, are awesome and, and they help me. Because if I don't keep myself honest uh, with your programs, I'll over-program 100%. So <laughs> I have that. Um, and, uh, you know, she, she, you know, if you guys can give her a shout out, she, she's a bikini competitor and she listens to you guys. Um, and I just think these rules don't, she doesn't think these rules apply to her. If you guys can give her a shout out, her name's Amanda. She loves you guys. Amanda, um, good luck with your competition. Train smarter, not harder. Yeah. That's it. Listen yeah. to your trainer, Amanda. L- listen to Maddie. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, she's a smart <laughs> Thank lady. you guys. Uh, but yeah. I, I have that. Uh, I, I wanted to support you guys. So, so I bought as many as I could because I, I just, you guys have done so much for me. I, w- I was an educator. Uh, before I became a trainer and I just love fitness so much. And I jumped because of you guys, because I felt confident with just kind of listening to all your episodes. And I, you know, I, I almost have just about all of them. So, so thank you, uh, Sal, but I'm pretty sure (laughs) I have all of them. Thank you. Well, thanks for calling (laughs) in. We appreciate appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you guys. What a great, great trainer, huh? Yeah, no, you know? that's a that's such a common issue with people in, in our space. I, I still do it, right? I, yeah. It's like, can I do more? Let me see. And part of it isn't necessarily I want faster results. Part of it is I just like to work out. So yeah, if I yeah. have an excuse it's to do like, more. It's also like, can I do this? It's yeah. kind of experimental on some level. Talk yeah, about the totally. self-awareness, though, to know that. Of course. To, of course. To see that in yourself. Because I know I've gone yeah. way too long with yeah. overtraining. And very, obviously, she's very in tune with herself. She was right on. Like, I feel like she knew the answers to her question. She just totally. wanted to hear us confirm. Little confirmation. Little confirmation. Yeah, no, because I think she's spot on. Like, she tried to do PED, and it was just too much volume and simply transitioning back to either one of the other programs. The only way I would ever do vo- uh, a MAPS PED type program would be if I could take a nap in the middle of the day, if I had a, <laughs> like all my meals planned out, you know, if I had like meditation Somebody practice. Somebody just and, like, you know, wipe Well, let's be honest it. that we, okay, when we wrote it, um, we knew we were gearing it towards the bikini and physique and bodybuilder, uh, you know, clientele. The advanced crowd. And we know that a large portion of those people are either, you know, genetic anomalies or enhanced with drugs. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the person that that program is best for. If you are not in a genetic anomaly or you're not running some, if running a cycle, it's probably not an ideal program for most people. So, but the truth is, there's a lot of people out there that exist. I mean, when I was in the space, I mean, I scaled to PED, but it wasn't toward till the end, till my pro days. So, yeah, it was I, like four or five years later. Right? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I I ran good solid three and a half years of you know the anabolic, aesthetic, performance, yeah. split, all those type of training, and then it wasn't until I got into the pro level where I was you know put that much time and effort before I could handle that, and you know of course I was enhanced. So, uh, and probably still could have scaled back a little bit because I know I was definitely starting to battle joint point pain and stuff. Uh, our next caller is Bennett from Wisconsin. Bennett, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Great to be on the show. Thank you. All right. Um, so my quick question is, uh, so I've been working out for the last six years, um, played sports in college as a quarterback for my team. 
Um, and then since graduating the last three years, uh, really just been trying to kind of finally bulk up and focus on getting good aesthetic, good physique. And I just haven't been seeing the gains or even the strength I've wanted. Um, it's kind of been really gradual. And I've been pretty avid with my fitness, diet, um, watching my calories, macros. So I just kind of looking for um, maybe I'm doing too much. I still play basketball once a week, um, even kind of practicing with a semi-pro football team on the weekends as well. So I'm just want to look at what splits would be best for that, um, or would I have to sacrifice um, some athletics and sports to achieve those goals of size and strength? So you hit the the question that I was going to go towards right away. Almost always, when I've trained a competitive athlete who now wants to like, okay, let's start building building an aesthetic physique. That's my new focus is they still have the athlete in them and they they approach that mindset towards sculpting a body and they're just two different monsters. You can't take the same mindset that you apply to playing a sport as you do to building a physique uh, because the your your caloric balance, your recovery, uh, your total volume that you do, how you manage intensity, all of those things matter so much when it comes to seeing results. So a couple questions so we can get get a, give, give you a better answer. What are you currently following as far as a routine? Are you following any MAPS programs right now? Uh, I just actually started MAPS Aesthetic um, okay. two weeks ago. Um, was going straight to performance right away, but I feel like it was going to be a lot of the stuff I'm used to. Um, and I wanted to focus more on um, just building the physique, as I said. Um, before that, it was pretty much four days a week um, with an upper lower split, um, pretty intense. Um, but a lot of it was still just what I've learned from playing football. So um, like basic deadlifts, um, power cleans, um, then really bench too much because I always had to keep my arm fresh. But so, yeah, it was a lot of the typical football workouts. And then how much how much are you playing like pickup games and stuff during the week? So what does like a normal week look like for you? So we got the the four four to five days in the gym lifting and then you have what else you got going on? Uh, so Monday usually I would do an upper body workout before going to play basketball and that was about two hours of basketball. Um, didn't really stop the entire time. Uh, then Tuesday would be rest, lower on Thursday and then back to upper on or lower on Wednesday and then upper on Thursday. And then Saturday would be a little bit of full body and upper. And then also just playing to either pick up football or going to a semi-pro tryout. So two days a week, you're, you're playing sports on top of the lifting. And it's for a couple yeah. of hours. Yeah. I, you're, I, I'd say two days a week of resistance training would be. Yeah, ideal. I was going to say anabolic. Yeah. I think I would have moved you to yeah. anabolic first. Okay. You're doing too much. And, you know, here's the thing with getting bigger and athleticism. The reason why sometimes building muscle can take away from athleticism is because the person is not integrating their skills along with the changing of their body shape and size, right? So, okay, you know this, right? Better than anybody uh, being highly competitive uh, as a quarterback. If I put 10 pounds on your body, and you go to throw the football, it's going to be just a little different, just enough to kind of throw you off just a bit because your arm is, you know, a quarter inch bigger or your pecs are a little bit bigger, right? So it's going to throw you off just a little bit. So the key to maintaining athleticism with size is to do them both at the same time. So you can in integrate mm -hmm. the skill mm -hmm. with the, you know, changing body. Uh, but aside from that, MAPS aesthetic in combination with what sounds like three or four hours of competitive sports is too much. Mm -hmm. Maps Aesthetic it's was designed to be run. <laughs> yeah, Maps Aesthetic was designed to be run alone. It was okay. it was not designed to be run concurrently with um, you know with sports. So I would go two days a week of resistance training max along with what you're doing, and I would make it more full body focused, compound basic lifts. And what you're going to be, you'll be pleasantly surprised. You'll see strength and muscle gains come on from doing well, that. Well, and I think too, you'd benefit the reason why too, I, I thought uh, like anabolic style would be great because the trigger sessions in between, I think would be massively beneficial for you to focus more on single joint uh, movements and, and really start to establish that more being that that's such a shift from, you know, the style of training you've been doing forever uh, with football. And I know that for me, that was a massive um, game changer in terms of like getting that kind of stimulation from my muscles and just constantly sending that signal. So 
Uh, but that's all meant to do, uh, you know, with low to moderate intensity max. So, you know, the whole thing is to be able to uh, manage your intensity appropriately in volume. Now, yeah. Bennett, are you um, are you done playing competitive sports like for the in the f- future, or are you, what's what's kind of like? What are you looking at in the next year to two years? Are you are you done? Are you going to go back? Like, what's that look like? Oh, I'm definitely done for future. It's more so just to kind of meet people, um, stay active, get some cardio in because I'm not much of a treadmill guy. But also, I've been listening to these podcasts, so I don't really need too much cardio. I've heard. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, it's, uh, yeah, if you're trying to look just kind of looking as a fun outlet, but yeah, I think I think the two days a week of Maps Anabolic. We'll send you Maps Anabolic if you don't have it already. So we'll send that over to you, so you got it. Um, follow that two days a week. Um, when you do play your pickup games, you know, make sure you're 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 well hydrated and fed. Uh, make sure you're you're fed going into it. Try and get some food right after. Uh, things like that. Make sure. You're uh, with that as much work and stuff you're doing. Plus, we're trying to build right now. Make sure your protein intake uh, is is uh, high enough. Uh, those things will make a difference. So, um, but I've got. I remember uh, going through this in my early 20s, transitioning from being somebody who played basketball all the time, and I still loved playing ball while I also was now all of a sudden this you know focused on building physique. And I just struggled for so long because I couldn't feed my body enough calories. I wasn't giving it adequate rest and recovery. And uh, I just, uh, you know what, I'm going to try and just cut sports out for a little while just to see what I can do. And like instantly I put on like 15 pounds of muscle. It was just, it was just too much for my body trying to do both. And so I had this, you know, struggle of, oh man, I love playing ball, but I also really want to focus now on building a physique. And so I had to kind of let go of how much I was, I was playing. Yeah, We'll send maps anabolic over to you if you don't have it. Okay, Bennett. Awesome. Appreciate it. All right, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Thank you guys a lot. Thank you. Yeah, um, you know, MAPS aesthetic, MAPS split, like these routines are designed to be run alone. Mm -hmm. They're not designed to complement additional sports or additional workouts. Uh, They're very focused on bodybuilding. So I think what people want to do is they want to take and they want to train like a bodybuilder and play all these sports. They combine the two. It's a bad formula. It's just Athletes too much. are the worst at this, dude. Yeah, yeah. And I'm dealing. I'm still dealing with this, even at the high school level. Like people doing their own thing, adding things to you know the the rest of the day. When yeah. like, so it's just a natural thing, yeah. you know. Like if people want to just keep up, you know that that high level intensity of movement. Um, but yeah, if you're really specifically focused on what the plan has set out for you, you're going to do much better. Yeah, mo- m- most of the athletes I trained was one day a week of resistance training. That's where we got the best results. More than that. And it was, uh, it was too, too unless much. it was off season, right? He'll probably build a pretty good physique by doing that too. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, the, the other thing that's so common totally. with athletes is just the, the over application of intensity. This is just their mindset when you're, especially like a football player, like you do everything intensely. And it's so a they, game yeah. always. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you approach your, your lifting and you know, it's, you know, it's not like that when it comes to, you know, building muscle, you know, building muscle requires the, the right amount of recovery time, the right amount of calories. It's like you're, you're, right, you're like, you're coaxing your body to build muscle. Yeah. You, you know, can't so force it, it. Yeah. You can't like, like muscle your way or, you know, like, you know, push yourself into building muscle. It's like, so Right away, I, when he started talking about what he's doing, I'm like, I guarantee this dude is just just doing too much. Totally. You know? mm-hmm. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. You can find Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. 